The ability to transport people and goods safely and efficiently across vast distances is fundamental to society's economic, political, social, and cultural growth. A brief glimpse into the early U.S. gives life to this principle. During the first half of the 19th century, Americans constructed a robust transport system that connected the East and West Coast. This Herculean task came to fruition through the new technologies of the Industrial Revolution, heroic engineering, and government subsidies. This investment transformed the North American continent into a web of railways, canals, and overland roads that had a tremendous effect on the country. In this new and exciting Liberty episode, we will be discussing the impact of the Intercontinental Railway on American society. Before constructing the Transcontinental Railroad, people would spend months on horseback and stagecoaches traveling from the East Coast to the West Coast. Others would sail southward to Panama and then cross the Isthmus Canal to board ships to ferry them to the West Coast. In May 1869, this changed when Leland Stanford, a railway baron, struck a ceremonial gold spike that signified the joining of the Central Pacific Railroad to the Union Pacific Railroad in Utah, the Transcontinental Railroad. While the construction of this infrastructure was a mammoth undertaking, its impacts on the young country were incredibly profound. This episode is a discussion of how the Transcontinental Railroad transformed America. The construction of the Transcontinental Railroad dramatically catalyzed the development of the West. The railroad introduced the West to the world and vice versa. For instance, it transformed California from an isolated place into one of America's most vibrant political regions and economic destinations. Many ambitious Americans of the time were eager to explore the West for new opportunities. The promulgation of the Homestead Act in 1862 offered them free land in the West. Thousands of Americans took advantage of this enactment to make settlements in the West. The availability of the railroad made the journey easier and many rushed to inhabit the vast expanse of the West. Soon, cities and towns sprouted around railroads, creating economic and transport hubs in the region. The census of 1890 declared the end of the American frontier as the nation was now inhabited from coast to coast. The Transcontinental Railroad had a profound effect on the American economy. The infrastructure was often used to ferry resources such as timber, precious metals, coal, and cattle from the West. The railroad also provided a business opportunity for industries in the East. Cities like Chicago grew as industrial hubs from which Western raw materials were sent to the East, which had many industries. By 1880, the Transcontinental Railroad ferried products worth over $50 million from coast to coast yearly. The Transcontinental Railroad caused the growth of numerous other railway lines, which competed with each other. This created many jobs and helped spark the growth of many towns and cities within the western interior. With the invention of the Pullman car, luxury railroad cars in 1864, investments in railroads and their destination shot up. The Northern Pacific, for instance, took advantage of the Yellowstone Park to promote luxury travel. This transformed the once bankrupt company into an extremely profitable enterprise. The beef industry benefited immensely from this transport network. Many Westerners got rich due to the high demand for beef in the North. For example, in Texas, a steer was worth $4, but it was worth $40 in the North. These economies were not lost on Texans. From 1866, Texans conducted cattle drives toward the North. However, there were protests from farmers and Indians whose crops were trampled during the passage. As the Transcontinental Railroad stimulated business growth, it also helped evolve the country's intellectual life and public discourse. Americans were now capable of traveling from coast to coast in a matter of days as they luxuriated in the nation's splendor from the windows of their train cars. Consequently, discussions that sprung from the West found their way into the East. Books authored in San Francisco found their way to the North a few weeks after they were published. The Transcontinental Railroad 
was not just a conduit for people and goods, but also a conduit for ideas. Railroad barons like Mark Hopkins, Stanford, Collins, Huntington, and Crocker Charles devised a way of tapping into the government's coffers to finance their business endeavors. Without doing this, the Transcontinental Railroad project would never have materialized. The Transcontinental Railroad was built on government loans, land grants, and government-guaranteed bonds. Surprisingly, when their debts came due, they refused to satisfy them, forcing the state to sue for default. Effectively, these men stumbled upon a business model where the state takes the risk and those enjoying the subsidies reap the profits. The Transcontinental Railroad Project inspired a sense of national pride and confidence. It was an indication to Americans of their country's growing industrial and economic might. Emboldened by the success of their project, Americans began looking for even greater industrial feats. It also manifested the American dream. From an economic standpoint, when the citizens of a country feel confident with their government, they begin to invest in their country. This helps to remedy the problem of capital flight. Not every American benefited from this development. While the Transcontinental Railroad was not the beginning of the battles between Native Americans and the settlers, it was an indelible marker of the encroaching white society. Within decades, this unstoppable force committed Native Americans to reservations. Treaties scattered Native Americans to various settlements, and the settlers quickly depleted the buffalo herds that the Indians depended on for sustenance. More disastrously, the settlers introduced the buffalo herds to industrial production, where they became a resource to be exploited en masse. Millions of buffaloes were slaughtered, and their hides were shipped on the railroads to markets in the north and east. The construction of the Transcontinental Railroad consumed vast amounts of natural resources. Massive amounts of wood were used to construct the railroad, including sheds, support beams for bridges and tunnels, and railroad ties. The construction devastated forests in the western region of the U.S. The growth of towns and cities also contributed to the encroachment of once wild areas. As the railroad companies invested more in the region, it became easier for hunters to travel across the region to hunt millions of buffalo. This slaughter affected native societies negatively as they hunted buffalo in moderation. It also weakened their resistance to white settlement. With the government's help, railroad entrepreneurs and other investors embarked on a project that transformed the western part of the United States. When the project ended, the world was notified of America's growing industrial and economic power. The Transcontinental Railroad opened the country to the West's vast opportunities, which many were eager to indulge in. It also occasioned historical injustices towards Native Americans. They were uprooted from their lands and committed to reserves. The project also caused massive environmental degradation due to the depletion of forests and the encroachment of wild areas. Be as it may, the Transcontinental Railroad was the manifest destiny wrought in iron. Thank you for indulging us in this riveting discussion about the impact of the Transcontinental Railroad to American society. Kindly show your support by liking, sharing, and subscribing to Liberty for more episodes on various historical occurrences, and please comment with any requests for future videos.